morning, everybody. Here's Reverend Sandy. Thank you, John. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Unity of Michiana Spiritual Center. To those of you who are joining us here in the room and those of you who are joining us via our live stream service, we're so glad that you are here. Uh, we're gathered together and in, in just taking a time apart from the busyness of our lives to open our hearts, to be infilled, to be inspired. Here at Unity of Michiana, we are a heart-centered a multi-generational and a diverse spiritual community. And we're dedicated to teaching and practicing a positive life approach on their spiritual journey. And our vision is a world that is united in loving acceptance, celebrating inclusivity, harmony, prosperity, and awakened consciousness. So thanks for all of you once again who are joining us online and just a reminder that uh, as, as you join in, if you say hello, uh, we'll be having Susan let us know that you're here and joining us today. And if you have a message for anybody special in the room, you can say hi and Susan will, uh, can let me know and we'll do a shout out uh, to you. And so as we gather, we breathe into that awareness of what we at Unity would call Christ consciousness or that higher light present within and inherent in each and every one of us. And so to celebrate that in honor of that and to just allow us to move into that contemplative mindful place, we like to light our Christ candle, allowing it to be lit within the heart of your being. And so I invite you to take a moment in prayer to settle into this choiceful presence right here, right now. Breathing, feeling the breath of life, feeling the flow of infinite spirit. And recognizing that this is a time of healing. It's a time of heightened awareness. It is a time of gathering, of connecting with others. It is a time of being good to ourselves and sharing that with each other. And so we open ourselves, beloved Mother, Father, God, to the inflow of your infinite light, your healing love. And we allow it to move through us and to be shared forth with others. And we say thank you in your name. Amen. And I can tell our kids are excited to come forward because I can hear them giggling back there and bring such a sense of a lightness to the service. So I'll have the kids come forward and bring the prayer box when you come. I ask that you rub your hands together. We see you surrounded in the light of God. And we hold you close in our hearts. And we hold you close in our hearts. Go and have a great time. So I'll turn it over to you, John, for some wonderful music. Thank you. Uh, these are a couple that we've done a lot in the past, so please, as usual, sing out loud and strong. Well, we will lift up this world higher and higher but this world and brighter and brighter step by step day by day we lift up the world to peace we lift up the world to
word, we will lift up this world higher and higher, light up this world brighter and brighter, step by step, day by day, we lift up the world to peace, we lift up the world to peace. One more step, we will take one more step, till there is peace for us and everyone, if we make one more step, one more prayer, we will say one more prayer till every prayer is shared by everyone will say one more prayer song one more song we will sing one more song till every song is sung everyone We'll sing one more Very nice, thank you. Thanks, John. Those are some beautiful songs. We haven't sung those yeah, for a while. Yeah, they're pretty, aren't they? Oh, Especially thanks. the second one. Yes, indeed. So, in Unity, we have a wonderful daily publication. It has an uh, uplifting message for us, and we'd like to share with you today our daily word. I'll have Sue DeRuse read that, and then I'll invite you to join me in a time of mindfulness and prayer. Hello, the daily word today is healing. Divine life lives as me, and I am whole and well. When I am experiencing a healing need, I focus my thoughts beyond illness and discomfort. Even as I seek treatment for injury or illness, I see myself whole. I remember that I am created in the image according to the likeness of God. I know my life is God's life living as me. Divine life fills every cell, strengthens every muscle, bone, and organ, and quickens every nerve in my body. It restores perfect order to all of my body's functions, releasing and replacing anything unlike itself. When someone asks me to pray with them, I do not ask about their symptoms or circumstances. I affirm the healing activity of divine life in each one with whom I pray. I see them as a spiritual being they are, whole and well. And this, for the scripture, John 1, 4, in him was life, and the life was light of all people. And again, today's word is healing. Thank you. Sue, thanks for sharing Daily Word with us today. And so as we just take this time for ourselves, this is a wonderful time to turn within. So I invite you to, those of you at home, those of you here in the room, to just relax wherever you are seated. To breathe. To remember that the breath of life connects us into all of our universe. And as you continue to breathe, you can feel it moving more deeply in and through your body. Touching the cells of your being. Opening your heart, opening your mind. And as you continue to breathe and to relax and to let go, I will be toning our singing bowl which resonates at the tone of the heart chakra, the chakra of love. And so I invite you to let the energetic waves of sound touch every part of your being, filling you with a sense of the presence of universal spirit of love.
And so as we breathe into that life force, we recognize that we are designed in the image of the wholeness of spirit, of the breath of life of Allah. And it reminds us and supports us in shifting from the outer world and from the busyness of our minds into the very soul and the heart of our being and of who we are, into that place that recognizes that higher consciousness, that which is the Christness, the light of higher awareness. And so we let that higher light, that healing light, just flow over us, around us, and through us. We let it permeate this room and move out into our community and out into our world. For in spirit, there is no separation. And we are one, not all alike, yet one in the wholeness of being. So taking this time choicefully apart from the busyness of our outer world ah, enables us to be replenished. To breathe deeply, to relax, to slow down, to let go. And as we do so, we see differently. We see the, with the eyes of our soul, with the eyes of our inner higher consciousness, rather than with just the human egoic outer eyes of personality self and from this deep place of seeing and of knowing of hearing what we call that still small voice that intuitive impulse that presence that is of higher wisdom everywhere all around us the godness of our universe we receive the answers that we seek. We receive guidance. We are held. We are comforted. And we are infilled with a strength and a courage that transcends our outer experience and comes from that sure faith, that sure consciousness, that sure awareness. That the light and the love of infinite spirit are present throughout time and space and beyond, connecting us all. And as we are connected and as we are in that flow of infinite wholeness, we are healed in our bodies, the cells of our being. We are healed in our minds, releasing negative patterns of thought and embracing higher truth. We are healed in our hearts as they are filled with the allness of love that surpasses understanding. And we let ourselves be infused with this awareness and we live into it, we breathe into it and then we share that forth. 
And so we take a moment now in the stillness, in the quiet, to be one with beloved God, to listen, to receive. in the sanctuary of our being. And from this place of deep connection to spirit. We take a moment now also to share our light and love as we intentionally speak forth the names of our loved ones that we would especially bless at this time. And we surround all the prayers in our prayer box as well. So knowing the power of the spoken word going forth into manifestation in our world, let us speak aloud the names of those people and situations we would bless. Donlan, Jocelyn, Kelsey, the whole family, Noah, Riley, Karen, Bob, Teresa, M.A. Wanda, Mary, Dale. Linda, John. Martha. Jolene, Richard, Sue Ann. Vicki, Evan, Bill. Unity of Michiana, Unity Worldwide Ministries and World Headquarters. Oh, and so we breathe these prayers forth from that highest intention of manifesting greater good. We pray this in and through the light of the allness of God. And so it is. Amen.
I've done this song a couple times. I like the message. Um, <clears throat> planting seeds, do the work. You don't necessarily what's going to come out of it, but if there's a good faith, you know, it'll be something good. Um, I want to dedicate this song to, well, first I'll say this song I juggle more than any other song. And it's, I was telling Kevin earlier, it's like, in, this is impossible, Kevin. <laughs> they got to switch from voice to whistle and piano and so just to have a chuckle on my behalf. And I want to dedicate this song to Kevin, and it reminds me of his uh, butternut squash. Because <laughs> he didn't know if he was going to get a pumpkin or a butternut or somewhere in between, right? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, here we go. <laughs> Planting the seeds on the ground Watering them with my sweat and tears Scattering them all around Guess that's what I'm supposed to do with my year Funny thing is I may know What I plant but never what will grow Always seems to me a perfect mystery Whatever grows will grow, whatever dies will die, whatever works will work, whatever flies will fly, whatever fails will fail, whatever soars will soar, I am planting seeds, nothing more. Sometimes I like to pretend. I know what the harvest will be, but I always knew it in the end. It was never really up to me. Funny thing is when I just do the work and simply trust, it always seems to lead a different life for me. Whatever grows will grow, whatever flies will fly, whatever works will work, whatever dies will fly, whatever fails will fail, whatever scores will sow, I am planting seeds, nothing more. The am only one of millions of seeds. I simply die, I just do what's mine to do and be Whatever grows will grow, whatever dies will die, whatever works will work, whatever flies will fly, whatever fails will fill, what's meant to soar will soar, I am planting seeds. Whatever grows will grow, whatever dies will die, whatever works will work, whatever flies will fly. Whatever fails will fail, what's meant to soar will soar. I am planting seeds, planting seeds, I am planting seeds, nothing more. Oh, the pipe takes me right back to the pubs of Ireland, and I was like, whoa, you, you can't listen to that and not tap your toe. I, I don't think it's possible. Thanks, John. Thanks for sharing. Susan, I'm just going to check in with you. Has anyone uh, said hello, or do we have some people joining us? Yes, we do. Okay. So we have Vicki Thompson and Sue Ann Sellers, Michelle Clark, Tamara Ashley, Bill Singler, Cecilia McBride and Sherry Alonso, Kathy Walbert, Suzanne Gibbons, Donalyn Martin, and a few mystery people who haven't identified themselves. <laughs> yeah, there's a few people too who kind
kind of fly under, you know, the radar a little bit, but welcome to all of you. It's so lovely to have you joining us this morning, and thank you for saying hello, and and uh, I often ask for uh, some responses from the people here in the room and also from you, so be sure to, to uh, go ahead and type those in so Susan can share those with us. So last week, our youth... Uh, came back uh, after the summer vacation, and we had this wonderful ceremony we call the Flying Up Ceremony as they move forward uh, into the next year and into the, their next experiences. And so I talked about stepping forward. Well, a part of stepping forward has to do with discerning and focusing on what's important. So that's my talk title for today, Focusing on What's Important. And you remember ever going out with your little magnifying glass and looking for bugs in the grass? Well, I um, haven't done that for a while, but, but it's a wonderful sort of metaphor for our willingness to begin to focus. And isn't it pretty easy in life to just kind of go along, you know, with what is and with status quo and sort of the habit and, and what's normal? And we don't really think about taking the time apart to focus, to really determine what is truly important for us. And, you know, we certainly have an awful lot of things in our lives that distract us from that process. And yet, if we are going to be moving forward, you know, with our youth, they go back to school. So, you know, they kind of, like it or not, they kind of get propelled forward. But do we take the time as adults to kind of take stock and begin to look at what is important to us and are we in fact engaging in, in those things. So think about some of the distractions that keep us from doing that. And, and those of you at home can go ahead and post um, and we can shout some out, but what about the the busy, oh, there comes the sound. I was wondering about that. It didn't seem like I was fully on. I'm on. <laughs> I'm on now. Yeah, the sound is better here in the room. So, so think about the busyness of our lives, right? And, and whether you're a school mom and you're rushing your kids to all their events, whether you're in business, whether you're retired, there are so many things in our world that vie for our attention. What about fear and doubt. How much do they distract us from that which we might otherwise feel is important in our lives? What about hmm, pleasing other people? Those thoughts that come in when we're, oh, maybe I'll Try something new. Oh, but so-and-so wouldn't like it, so better not do that. What are the things that distract you? We all know, my gosh, social media, for heaven's sakes. Twitter, Instagram, whatever, and on our phones. I mean, I, I am like Pavlov's dog on my cell phone. When a text comes in, part of being a minister is to be available. And, and yet I take that, I think, to an nth degree because I get so used to being right on, on the spot right there when the text goes off. And it does a little nice little bell for me. How about you? What about all the notifications? Do you get notifications either on your cell phone or on your tablet or something when somebody posts some, something on Instagram or a Twitter feed comes through or something? Yeah. And and what do we do? It's It's like... You know, that whole thing where we, we talk about the dogs, we take them out for a walk, and then they see a squirrel, and they go, squirrel, oh, squirrel, here I go, and we run around. And, and, and that's what we do as, as humans, because we pay so much attention to our outer world. From scripture out of uh, Mark 4, uh, verse 19, it says, but all too quickly, the message is crowded out. By the worries of this life and the message being the message the disciples were teaching by the worries of this life and from galatians 1 10 it says am i now seeking human approval or god's approval or am i trying to please people 
So how many times in life do we get pulled off course, get distracted by the stuff of the outer world? Because that's where our focus is. And then the fears or the worries, we're not good enough, we can't accomplish this, there's not enough money, there's this, there's that, there's a deadline to meet, there's the shoulds, there's the have-tos, and we just go right down the rabbit hole, don't we? And so what happens to the dreams that we have, what happens to the things that are truly important in our life? They get covered up, they get pushed aside. Or we just plain give up and don't even pursue. Uh, Robin S. Uh, Sharma, who is a Canadian author, he is a stress management consultant um, in spirituality. And he says the challenge for so many of us is that we are so deep into daily distractions and being busy, busy, busy that we miss out on those moments and opportunities that would get our lives to a whole new level of wow. And Stan gets, how many of you remember the girl from Ipanema goes walking? Yeah, yeah. Some of us are old enough for that one. <laughs> yeah, Stan Getz was an amazing jazz saxophonist. And he said, life is too full of distractions nowadays. When I was a kid, we had a little Emerson radio and that was it. We were more dedicated. We didn't have any choice in the matter. And so we can, friends, really be aware if we are seeking to step forward to maybe accomplish a new dream or to just simply have more space or time in our lives, we can begin to recognize that it's up to us to be choiceful about doing that. And, and in order to do that, we need to begin discerning what really is important. And if we watch TV, TV and commercials and listen to everything, they're more than willing to tell us what they think we should have as important in our lives. And the news, oh my gosh, the news. But friends, there is a process by which we are able to shift from our consciousness in the outer world as humans because our egoic mind is going all the time with judgments, with outer um, experiences, is it not? Yeah. But there is an opportunity to begin making choices differently in order to step away from all the shoulds and the have-tos that come flying at us, whether our parents' messages, whether, uh, whether the messages from the news, whether the messages from our boss at work, whether old inculcated habits and messages have shoulds and have-tos in them, it doesn't leave a lot of room for our hearts to sing our hearts to expand, to explore, and to discern differently than constantly looking to our outer world for answers. Tony uh, La Russa, those of you who are baseball fans, um, would know he was a professional ball player and, and a coach. He said there are always distractions if you allow them, if you allow them. And Tara Stiles, who is a yoga instructor and author um, and a model, she says, when we follow distraction, oh, excuse me, when we allow distractions to wobble us away from ourselves, that's when our intuition starts to fade and our focus dulls. So friends, if we are, oh, Susan, yeah, what do we got? So I wanted to share, Adrian Nichols said, a lot of times I turn my phone off and just leave it somewhere and even getting my car and drive without my phone just to focus on things around me and not my cell phone. Thank you. Yeah, how many times do we turn off our phones? Well, and I'm, I'm particularly not good at doing that. Um, many of you may be. Or stepping away from the computer or stepping away from 
um, the the news or you know the TV programs and it doesn't mean that any of that is a negative thing. It just means that it distracts us from knowing if it is truly what we want to focus on and how much we want to focus on it. So again, don't even hear my speaking of it in terms of there's another shouldn't have to. Okay, throw your phone out in the river, you know, and don't ever go online and don't look at Instagram. So that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is let's begin to be aware choicefully of the things that distract us from our own inner truth. And so to engage in discovering and focusing on what's truly important, it requires prayerful discernment. Focusing on what's truly important requires prayerful discernment. We don't always think of that. Because we see all the stuff. We're busy at work and people are throwing stuff at us and we're looking at things. We seldom stop to pray first, right? We pray when we're in trouble or we pray after the fact. We don't usually stop and pray first. And by prayer, I, it, it can mean a, a whole variety of experiences of simply shifting out of our own human locus of awareness, breathing into something different, taking time apart from the crowd, Resting for a while, having fun, playing, all of that can be a part of your prayer time that allows each of us to begin discerning more clearly what is really important. From our founders of Unity, uh, well, Charles was one of the founders, and his second wife, Cora Fillmore, they wrote The Twelve Powers of Man. He says, we find that there is in man a knowing capacity transcending intellectual knowledge. Nearly everyone has at some time touched this hidden wisdom and has been more or less astonished at its revelations. Have you ever had, you know, just sort of that impulse or that intuitive knowing just come forth? And it's like, whoa. And it brought a good message or a healing or an idea or a thought. And that's what, what Charles is speaking of. He said, we should quicken our discernment and our ability to choose good. This wisdom of spirit is man's through the all-knowing and all-discerning power of spirit within him, within us. And we need never fear going wrong if we listen to this divine intuition. So friends, how often do we take time apart instead of making our decision from what everybody else tells us from the overwhelm we experience at work and the busyness, busyness, busyness? How often do we take time to just be still and to explore? To explore in the heart of our being with all the limitations and the restrictions that come from old habits of thinking with old, from old beliefs around what we can do or what we can accomplish, but to simply listen. Ah, listen into the heart of our being. And what is it that, that makes our soul sing? What is it that inspires us? What is it that we choicefully, really, truly want to focus on doing or accomplishing? And when we set aside all the parts of us that say, oh, well, this is okay, but that's not. When, when we do not place restrictions, we can begin recognizing that things like taking time to look at Instagram or to watch all the videos that come through on all the ads on the phones is a wonderful thing at times. Or taking time to take that nap or to sleep late in the morning, or to go for a walk al along uh, the river or out in nature. See, when we begin to shift our focus of attention from the outer world and all the things we're told out here into this knowing of the spirit, into this connection to our inner higher consciousness, we will begin discerning 
a difference of a prioritizing in our lives of what's important. You know, I grew up in a generation where he who has the most toys when he dies wins. It was all about accumulating wealth and things. The best car, the nicest house. A, a lot of that was a, a part of that generation. And I think, you know, in, in Generation X and now Generation Z, there's a whole nother focus. And those of us who thought, you know, work hard and, oh, my God, they aren't stepping up to the plate or, you know, any of the judgments that we have, they come from our background. And, and, and if we step outside of all those old restrictions and let our minds be totally creative, we can embrace not accumulating so many things, but we can embrace opening our heart. We can embrace feeling a sense of peace. We can embrace a sense of slowing down. From scripture in Colossians 3, 2, it says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Meaning set your mind as you listen into the heart of your being. And of course, this on things above, meaning above the flim flam stuff of the, the human world. So place your mind on, on those things, not on the earthly things. And from 2 Timothy 1.7 in scripture, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and of love and of sound judgment, friends. So as, as we begin choosing to focus on what's truly important to us, it's about a willingness to take some time apart. It's about a willingness to set aside old belief systems. It's a willingness to see what's important to us. And, and to choose to begin practicing that focus. Because it's really easy, you know, like, oh, I think I'll go to the gym and start working out. And, and that may be because we think we should. And I'll tell you, for the most part, if we do it because we think we should, or others think we should, yeah, that, that going to the gym doesn't last too long, does it? No. If we have an internal true desire to go to the gym, to work out, or, or to, do, to learn to play the piano, or uh, to take a cooking class, or to begin to paint, if we have a true desire for that that begins to blossom within us, and we focus on that as being important. We don't always have to figure out how we're going to do that ahead of time. We don't have to have all the ducks lined up in a row. But by the intention of the focus of our thinking, connecting with infinite spirit, we begin to open every avenue before us, allowing spirit to bring that forth into our lives. And we may find that it's not about Nike, just do it. It's not about the more I get done, the better I am. It's not about hurry, hurry, hurry. It might be, hmm, what would it be like to slow down? What would it be like to be okay to slow down? So this process of focusing on what's truly important to us becomes a journey, becomes a practice for us. A willingness to listen to spirit, to that still small inner voice. And from scripture in Psalm 32, 8, it says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. And what that means, I will guide you with my eye. It's referring to the higher inner wisdom. Higher inner wisdom. And from Ephesians 5, 15 through 16, it says, look carefully then how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time. Now, when you hear make the best use of the time, how many of you click to? <gasps> Honestly, come on, raise your hands. Yeah. Maybe not everybody. 
But that's an old trigger statement. Oh, you better make the best use of your time. How many times have we heard that? And it goes into our human egoic brain and then propels us to do all kinds of stuff that really isn't what's our focus and what's important to us. And so I would invite us to embrace this scripture, making the best use of our time, taking that into your soul, into your heart, into your solar plexus, and recognizing the best use of time is many of the things I said before. Being still, taking a walk, slowing down. So it is our willingness to notice. Notice the pathways of our minds, the way we think, how we focus in our outer world, what our outer world teaches us versus our willingness to connect deeply to spirit and have it guide us in what's important in prioritizing these things in our lives. Have we had anyone else that wanted to share anything, Susan? No, but we did have um, a few more people come on. I wanted to mention Terry and Christina are on. Hey, Terry, uh, Christina says, good morning, beautiful people. And I also wanted to share, um, Donalyn said earlier, um, good morning all, I love and I'm grateful for you all. And Cecilia said, Good morning, Unity family. Sherry and I send our love and care to you all this beautiful Sunday. Oh. And Vicki sends blessings to all. Doesn't that feel good? And we just had Katrina Andrews come on, and she said, be the love of your life. Oh, Katrina, hi. I'm so glad you joined us. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wonderful to have you with us. Uh, these people you guys are looking forward this way but it's wonderful to be embraced and feel those that we love you know participating and and you know not everyone always wants to make a comment and so for those of you that haven't we embrace you also but it's, it's wonderful to um, have have them say hello so I wanted to share um, a quote from uh, Carl Honoré uh, he is an international best-selling author of the book called Power of Slow. The Power of Slow. He's oftentimes featured on TED Talks. Many of you are familiar with uh, wonderful speakers on, on the TED Talks. And he says, research has shown that time pressure leads to tunnel vision and that people think more creatively when they're calm, unhurried, and free from stress and distractions. See, that kind of goes against what we were always taught, or those of us um, that are a little older, and I think things are changing now. Because I think the pace is shifting, even though our youth are, are on social media and those kinds of things, but they also aren't embracing old paradigms of belief that, in the ways that we have. So I'm just inviting you to consider slowing down this next week. Finding out as you slow down how that opens you to be receptive to what is really important to you. And Miriam Hasna, she's um, of the New Earth Mystery School. She's a highly sensitive intuitive. And her advice is to disconnect from everything long enough to see if it feeds your soul or if it's a distraction. What's deeply connected will always remain. So if you are willing to disconnect from all the other stuff, from all the outer mind um, habits, all the rabbit holes we go down, all the squirrels we chase, if you're willing to disconnect from those long enough to listen to the inner still small voice, we are indeed guided. We are loved. We are upheld. We are supported. We are nurtured. And in that space, it allows us to truly determine what's important to us and to be able to focus more clearly on manifesting and accomplishing those things in our lives. 
So in closing, I will say, uh, share from a, a, a keynote speaker psychologist, Bill Crawford. Uh, he says, here is a process for discernment. Say to yourself, God is my ultimate source, source of truth and wisdom and dwells forever at the center of my being. Therefore, any thought, emotion, or action that takes me further away from my center can be neither truthful nor wise. So friends, if you would uh, like this particular quote, you can go to Unity www.unitymichiana.org to our website because um, each Sunday all the talks are posted and all of the uh, quotes and everything that I use as scripture are posted also. You might want to put that on your uh, refrigerator uh, to just remind you or maybe the, the bathroom mirror to remind you to take time apart to discern differently and to allow the truth of your soul and your being to guide you forward. So next week, I'll sort of be doing, uh, this was kind of a part one, I'll be doing part two, and I'll be talking about spiritual tools to help us in discerning what's important. Ah, so that concludes the talk for today, and I'll um, invite Susan, uh, she's going to come forward to share our first uh, announcement of the happenings and events here at Unity of Michiana. So today at 2 o'clock is the St. Joe County Crop Walk. And as most of you know, this is an interfaith fundraising walk to raise money for local food banks and to help people in our country and around the world. The Unity team has three people on it, Patty Minnick, Reverend Sandy, and myself. Any of you are welcome to walk with us. Just meet us at Zion Community Church downtown between 1.30 and 2. We're also grateful for donations. If you'd like to donate, you can see any of us who are walking, or you can scan this QR code, which I will have in fellowship afterwards. That'll take us direct, take you directly to our fundraising page. Thanks for supporting this project. Thank you, Susan. Yes, I know Unity um, Church of Peace, which is Unity Michiana, has participated in the crop walk. I think then entire time I have been here and Susan has headed up keeping us centered and focused on on that and uh, you shared something Susan about the percentage of the monies that are raised do go for right here in our own community the major percentage of it and then then there it goes out a little bit farther out but it's wonderful to know that we're making a difference right here in our community so and it's kind of fun to during COVID, we walked over in the park because you just walked on your own. But we're now back to walking with a whole group of people from other spiritual communities and around this area. So if you want to come out and walk along the river, um, join us at, at um, Zion Community Church at 2 p.m. I uh, also wanted to make an announcement regarding um, Animal Blessing Sunday, which is coming up on October 8th. And we like to focus our service around our beloved animals and friends. And so we will be creating on that day a pet blessing board here in the sanctuary. So any of you who are going to be joining us in person, feel free to bring a picture of a pet, whether it's a pet that has passed or is currently still, still with us. Um, and I'll have you be putting that on the pet blessing board. Uh, for those of you joining us via our live stream, you're more than welcome to email a picture of your pet to Susan and she will print it out and we will include it on the board. And if any of you here don't have the capacity to print out a picture, you can email that also to Susan and she'll have it here for you uh, to post. And, and so in that time, and it's kind of hard, I know some places will bring all their pets in, but... Um, I'm not too sure my cats would be real happy with that or, or, or all the dogs barking. And, and I think energetically we know that we can bless them and, and they're, they make such a difference in our lives and touch our hearts and are such a valuable companions. So please join us, ask your friends, let your friends know they can come um, and, 
and to join the service on October 8th via our live stream. So um, let them know that we will be doing that, blessing and honoring our animal friends on Sunday, October 8th. And then just a reminder for our midweek group that meets via Zoom uh, for a little bit of discussion about a topic that day and a time of just um, meditation and some music. Please feel free to join us any Wednesday from 6 to 7. And Susan sends out that, e that Zoom link uh, by email. So if you're not on the email list and want to be included, be sure and let her know. Uh, either here in the office or you can here at church or you can email her at the office. And that concludes our announcement. So at this time, I invite you to focus with me on a consciousness of prosperity and abundance. Knowing that God, the infinite source of all the natural flow of our world, supports us unendingly with all that we need as we open ourselves and allow ourselves to receive and as we participate in that process of giving and receiving. And we are grateful here at Unity of Michiana for the gifts that you give that support us in whatever way you choose to do that. Because we are solely funded by your donations and your presence and your support. You can do that online at unitymichiana.org on our website. You can do that on our own phone app. Go into your app store and put in Unity of Michiana and makes it real easy to, to set up a, a, a donation or an ongoing uh, recurring donation. We also, Susan is great with these QR codes. So we're, we're right in the, in the current of... of um, of, of doing things currently. So um, we do have a QR code in the back. We have a contributions basket in the back here, but we are so grateful for all of us in that consciousness because our prosperity and abundance starts there. It starts in how we hold that idea of being absolutely supported and provided for. And as we focus on that, then the gifts that we give just become multiplied and magnified. So if you'll join with me now in holding in consciousness right here in your hands, whether you actually have your gift there or whether you are giving it um, through our technology, affirm with me our prosperity statement. God is my support and my abundant supply. I give and receive in freedom and in joy. And so we bless these gifts of your consciousness, of your prayerful prosperity, of your financial support, of your heart support. And we know that these gifts flow forth to manifest greater good. And we are thankful. We pray in your name. Amen. Now I'll have you rise and we'll sing our peace song and join in our prayer for protection. And those of you here in the room, we invite you to join us for a little light snack fellowship right following the service. And then come on down and walk if you will. The sun and the wind and rain bring everything. The Father is high above, Mother Earth be me. Peace on earth, peace on earth, peace on earth, peace on earth. We're sisters and Brothers all, all the world around, we lift our voices high in one joyous sound. Peace on earth, peace on earth, peace on earth, peace on And our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God 
watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. And so it is. And so we allow it to be. Thanks and blessings, everyone. Have a wonderful, focused, prioritized week of great joy, of great expression. I sure enjoyed spending this time with you. My blessings. Look forward to seeing you next week. Bye, everyone. Thank you.